Уважаемые коллеги, я бы хотела всех поприветствовать. Немецкого языка. И хочу поблагодарить вас the interest to the conference of our university and I would like to um, say that um, I, hope, I hope that our discussion will be um, as interesting as it, is, it was yesterday and we will touch upon important matters in uh, translation teaching. Translation is really important at our university we allocate enough of hours to um, train interpreters and uh, speaking um, uh, the German. I'm very intrigued by the topics presented here today, and I will be waiting new revelations and insights in this um, area of studying. I will say a few words about our ways of works, of our discussion and uh, speeches. We decided that uh, the speech will take 20 minutes. Uh, it is uh, time to speak and uh, ask questions right after the after the speech or regarding the topic of uh, the discussion and in the end we will be able to discuss some problems touched upon by these uh, presentations when it comes to the order of speaking our presentation with my uh, colleague from uh, NSLU uh, and we decided to allow our colleagues to speak and we will be um, the last ones to speak. Возможно, у вас есть какие-то вопросы или предложения? Тогда предложение начать. I will share my presentation now. Такое размышление, с одной стороны, консолидация моего опыта, а я работаю, вот как видно из слайда. Uh, all the examples I'm going to present today when I'm speaking about um, simulation of interpreting activities, I will be referring to my experience of uh, teaching master's degree since bachelor degree has a bit different specifics. Uh, uh, 
Um, ну, я прежде всего хочу сказать, что... The training of interpreters um, means that uh, all the interpreters have all the professional competences that are in demand in the uh, current situation in the job market. That is why quite often we use the elements of simulations of real interpreting activities. First of all, Before I say how we organize simulation of interpreting activities uh, on our program, I would like to draw your attention to a number of aspects of simulation of interpreting activities. First of all, what do we understand when we say uh, simulation of interpreting activities? The simulation of interpreting activities is uh, a creation of uh, cross-cultural, professional, multilingual culture, which allows to um, train different uh, translation tasks and uh, allows to solve problems that happen in the real life uh, translation practice. Um, this is one of the main ways to make uh, the process of training of future interpreters uh, efficient. It's one of the main uh, factors that uh, affects the motivation of uh, students. Besides, the simulation of interpreting activities in process of interpreters training allows to um, construct the communicative area sphere of uh, their future career. And we, what is more, we have to use uh, uh, interactive uh, technologies in our work. That is why one of the main factors of uh, training of interpreters is multicultural sphere. Uh, future interpreters will have to work at conferences, at uh, negotiations, in multicultural culture. Um, to demonstrate uh, what I've mentioned on practice, I would like to show you uh, the structure of our master program in my university to explain why we use this uh, or other simulation methods. The first year is dedicated to uh, translation, obvious uh, dialogue, one side, two side translation. And during the second, They can know uh, language really well, but they don't have an actual experience in translation. They start to uh, acquire this competence only in a uh, master's program. We hoped that students, uh, that our applicants will be a bit different, but in the reality, the majority of students have never practiced translation before in their life. That is why when we select students, we have to dedicate uh, a lot of time to make uh, a good choice. And that's not always the case. That is why we start from uh, uh, translation. It is a monologue, dialogue, one-sided translation, two-sided translation, and that during the second term, we start teaching students simultaneous translations. We have a side translation, some uh, exercises, and so on. Uh, the implementation of simultaneous translation in the second term means that the second year is quite uh, 
short when it comes to uh, the time dedicated to studying. We don't have enough time during the second year. We cannot allocate as much time as we allocate to translation during the first year. And that's why we start everything a bit earlier. Simultaneous translation only to Russian, but, uh, but it um, depends on the student. This consecutive interpretation or simultaneous translation and etc. In Consec has been extremely popular over the last uh, decades. And if technology allows, we can we can match it all with uh, simultaneous translation. Uh, here before you can see um, the main reasons for a full-scale simulation of interpreting activities in the process of interpreters training. This might not be all the components of the situation of simulation of interpreting activities. But these are key factors that affect uh, the training of inter uh, future interpreters. First of all, we need to have uh, native speakers. It is really important. Uh, we won't be speaking about the situation we faced uh, in 2020. Um, there are different experts from international organizations who come uh, to university um, um, as a agreement and we try to uh, try to organize simulations when these uh, native speakers can uh, perform a master class at the university we have professors at our university uh, native speakers and students, native speakers. We also mean not only our students, but also students from uh, uh, foreign countries, uh, participants of academic exchange. Usually they arrive to Russia to, to the time of three months and we can plan during this period it is important for the native speakers to be able to be good actors because simulation it is a sort of a performance we have to um, be ready and uh, have authentic speeches, authentic materials of um, an event we are translating. When we're talking about a full-scale simulation situation, the uh, event must look real. We need to have uh, all the necessary tech which is important. And we need to allocate enough time to organize uh, enough time to organize this event. All these factors are equally important because the time we allocate to organize the event is a very important moment. We can uh, uh, single out organizational uh, organizational event we can um, uh, bring we can bring together a team because it is really difficult to organize such an event uh, alone so it is it should be a professor who can bring uh, together a team probably a professor who works at the same university the same program um, that's how it works at our university. 
and uh, my colleagues who also part of our team they will be speaking here today but on the other topic we need to prepare speeches in this case during such a full-scale simulation uh, that is not a task of students it would be really easy to transfer this uh, task to students and ask them to prepare but to tell the truth students are taking care of other things they um, train for this um, for this event for the translation uh, speakers are really glad to uh, prepare their own speeches it's very interesting for them they make glossaries for the students they uh, give um, advice to students to make sure that uh, they have all the implicit knowledge they need to uh, translate this text uh, in a correct way a student who um, is working on uh, their glossary um, also takes up uh, this task uh, he or she um, learns more about uh, about the topic of the simulation if we refer to the terminology of shell we can say that it is a last minute preparation and in conference preparation that is to say that students are getting ready in the last minute when they are ready to listen something to understand something and during the conference when they hear terms uh, when they gain understanding of the topic and there is a teamwork among students students aim at that when they can help each other another more thorough terminology was um, um, chosen by Kalina you can see it on the slide I would like to draw your attention to post-process activities that were dedicated by Kalina I think it is really important because this uh, reflection is very important and uh, everything that can be uh, wrote after that could be extremely important and useful for students uh, in the end full-scale simulation activities cannot happen on the regular basis first of all uh, first of all it requires a large number of uh, foreign representatives which is uh, uh, difficult to uh, difficult for many universities in russia i'm speaking about my university but i know that we have different universities all across russia and i know that our university has uh, a vast network of foreign representatives. Perhaps other universities do not have such opportunity. Besides, we cannot uh, restart, simulate all the situation of the translation um, in uh, the laboratory setting, such as UN session, conference, forum, etc. We cannot transfer it to the uh, audience. All the real events materials are accessible they can be classified a number of uh, working languages is restrained to the number of languages we are teaching for instance we have a great infrastructure to uh, practice russian english german french and some years spanish languages but it's not been the case over the last few years. We don't have a large number of uh, students who um, know Spanish language. Um, and besides, it takes up a lot of time and it requires very thorough organization, organizational work. 
I would like to say that besides, we are able to organize once a year such an event that requires huge preparation and uh, it allows to unite uh, and combine different types of translation. For instance, during one event, a student can translate uh, from uh, can do a side translation, he can do consecutive translation, he can do simultaneous translation. That uh, depends on how the organizer is um, making this process. We can include welcome speeches, which can be translated uh, in consecutive way, and uh, it can be translation at site and, of course, simultaneous translation. However, that's only in the end of um, training. And at time of training, we uh, do uh, training simultaneous translation. I've already uh, came across this term in um, different literature. For instance, um, during the term when we are working on uh, different um, um, competences we can organize different events and uh, we can uh, test the competences that have already developed during the term we can have uh, a, an exam in form of simul simulations i would like to point out that in each case student takes up only the responsibilities of a translator or interpreter if we need to prepare the speeches we don't um, have to um, prepare them uh, as uh, uh, speak speakers um, they can be students from different course student from students from different master's program that could be teachers from the university uh, for instance uh, they don't always speak uh, in english at conferences that is um, something we can allow today and here are some stages of uh, um, of uh, simulation of simulation of uh, interpretation they are divided into three phases the first phase is activization the second is actualization and the third one is the stage of reflection we need after the situation of uh, simulation we need to draw some conclusions and as part of as a result i would like to say that uh, the educational result of the simulation will depend on the way a simulation is implemented into the educational process and the efficient result of uh, simulation can be achieved uh, when uh, the work is um, uh, holistic and complex. I think I have managed to present my topic and I am open to your questions. I think there was left a lot to say, but I will try to cover and to specify everything please um, i have a question i have two questions actually uh when i've been listening to your presentation first i uh, do you have uh, an understanding of spontaneous translation for instance without glossary for instance i know that this uh, simulation 
uh, students prepare for the simulations, but uh, sometimes it happens that students cannot uh, prepare for the translations. Do you uh, create the conditions where students do not have time to prepare for the translation? And uh, the second question, how do you grade this uh, work of the student at the simulation? These are two questions that are the most important to me. Thank you. Uh, the first one, yes, of course, we have lessons when we um, allow students, when we teach students to overcome different problems which uh, were unseen, which were unforeseen. For instance, we propose uh, speeches to students and there are different um, serious problems. There are uh, different. We sometimes have to help students with something. For instance, that's a term. But we do have lessons when we teach students to do it better. They don't, uh, they always work with their phone. When they have a time to look on their phone, I just cannot notice it. But they can find words really, really fast. They can not only look at them, but they can share it. It happens in a matter of seconds. It exists. It exists when we translate from Russian to English, from English to Russian which we take up as an experiment. When it comes to grading students and their competences, well, the full-scale simulation, is held in the end of uh, the master's program. We didn't have it last year and we won't have it this year because uh, the borders are closed and we don't have enough time and students cannot uh, be all together we can't organize big events and next we can uh, um, specify that we have a table according to which we create our students and that is analyzed afterwards we show it later. Yes, we have speakers. When we join together, we organize a list and each and every one of us discuss everything. And then we share it with the students and their translations are recorded somehow or no, we don't record our students. It's a very, it's very stressful for students and uh, we uh, distract when we record. We don't have the necessary infrastructure, but I think that we could have recorded students. It's a useful practice and uh, we could do that. During the exam, we record students, but during the simulations, we don't. I wanted to say thank you, Tatiana Vitalievna, for sharing this extremely valuable experience. Um, the simulation um, was a great revelation for me. Since I'm teaching uh, political translation, I cannot tell you this. For instance, when uh, you simulate the United Nations uh, conference, it means that uh, the conference is um, aimed at the political translations or something else. Yes, because, uh, we would like to find other ways, but when it comes to the accessibility of the materials, we can find um, we can find a lot of materials in um, this topic. Of course, we had one topic with the representatives of uh, 
thought. It was um, agricultural topic, but it was not really specific. We didn't have uh, um, some special terms like uh, he shared the materials with us. He said that we uh, that it was allowed by the organization to use them, and we could use that. We could not find them on the internet. He worked himself, and he had the, the these materials at hand. Uh, sometimes we managed managed to find the materials uh, ourselves but to make sure that it works together. We need uh, political translations for that. And another small question: When you said about United Nations. Um, the conference organized by uh, Mugimu, when the leading message was multidisciplinary and um, uh, uh, in engaging other specialists to the training. Uh, my second education is geology, and we know that uh, we invite specialists um, it's not only United Nations. Did you try to cooperate with other organizations? For instance, in St. Petersburg, you have specialists from other organizations. Because translator, it's not a political translator. Sometimes you need to translate something legal, something geological, something medical. So uh, interpreter must be really really comprehensive we unfortunately cannot cannot cover all the topics uh, in these two years that is why we cannot go to other universities and uh, diversify we just don't have enough resources we need to prepare for each simulation that's a special unit in the education. That's why I say no, we don't do that. Ну, хорошо, да, я поняла большое спасибо. Да. Если можно как-то потом вот презентацию, я видела там ваши контакты тоже, я не успела просто их записать, но я смотрела, что презентация не есть. Я вот попросила там как-то, если презентация... Не share with us your contacts. You know, all my... You can find all the necessary contacts on the website. And you will find them on the website of my university. РГПУ имени Герцена, да. Я знаю, я там была, это был 2019 год еще Colleagues, I see that the statement was very interesting uh, and you are discussing it. But please don't forget about the time. I thank you for your statement and I give the floor to our next speaker, Tiana Nikolaevna Bilaeva. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, I was sent uh, to China, but in no relation to China. I worked in Moscow. Uh, now I would like to share my presentation with you. I would... Вы знаете, я перед этим посмотрела специально uh, в поисковой системе, нашла Академию общественных наук. Нажмите сначала. Так, одну точку. 
Самый левый угол. А, ну, там... Вот, все, в порядке. А, ну, вот вы видите, где я работаю. Interpretation. I have been teaching interpretation for a long time, and today I would like to speak about a very practical thing. The one that I used, and once it occurred to me that there is a problem that needs to be solved, and I, I believe I found a solution. When we start to teach the translation and interpretation. Uh, our students usually face a number of problems. Uh, if any one of you teaches interpretation, you will see it's about panic. Um, because the students hear something and like they get paralyzed and they say, we can't remember anything. We can't um, write anything down. Uh, and I also teach the students to make uh, interpreters short, uh, shorthand writing. And we see this, there are various types of making this shorthand writing. But anyway, we try to stick to the system of Elena Alikina. So we try to focus on a theme and dream. And it's very important to analyze what you hear. And when these students start to interpret, and they say they don't remember anything, but of course they try to develop their memory. But anyway, when they learn how to make this note, they try to write down everything they hear. We all understand that it is Im it's impossible to remember everything we hear, and no one can write as fast as we speak, um, except maybe for those who make transcript transcripts. And what what does it lead to? Usually, in the we can't write the end of the phrase, and we don't write down those phrases that are very important. And the key uh, thing we should explain to our students: they do not have to remember each word; they do not have to write down each word. And this. And we should not only say it, we should demonstrate it by our own example. They should see how it works. Otherwise, no one will believe us. Even if we um, try to interpret and translate um, as good as possible. So we are facing the following goals. The students should be able to analyze the structure of the sentence. They will be able to use less memory. They will not have to remember all the words. Though they are able to remember about a hundred words, almost literally. But if a piece of text is large, is too large, and each person, our brain launches the analytical mechanisms, and of course, they remember all, only those parts that are important for the communication. So the students should see and should see by example that they may find the um, the meaning, the key meaning of the sentence, of the message, 
and they should see and understand. They do not have to remember, and they have to remember and write down only the most important one. They should be very reasonable and they should not um, in panic write down everything each word and each phrase so they should see it and we should prove it to them so what kind of material should we use to so that the students can see it? I've seen a great deal of manuals for uh, teaching interpretation. There are many texts uh, for training shorthand writing. I see that there are texts that are that are meant to be written. These are not texts that can be read loud. And now I have a question. Maybe it is better to use uh, register to register those texts. But the problem is the following. The recording is too fast. The students do not have enough time to analyze what they hear. And of course, the pace of speech is too fast and they, they can't handle it. And of course, it is important to do something many times, but below speed. Uh, slowly so that they can analyze it and the tabs and then we should speed the recording up so we can conclude that recordings during the first ways should not be used of course they are typical but they are too fast if we record, if the professor records his own voice, he reads aloud and records it. Very, it's too often that I see that in, in the manuals, texts are written, but they are different. Oral speech and written text are absolutely different. And, and such texts should not be used as well, even if we try to read them slowly, but their structure, their syntax is different. No one speaks like that. In many texts, we find texts that are literally simulated. They were they are not real. And, and we have to select the information for this first phase. And on the one hand, the text should not be read loud too fast. On the other hand, this text should include all the uh, peculiarities of, of the speech. And in a transcript, these peculiarities are seen perfectly. A script is a written text of a of a spontaneous speech. It includes even mistakes that were made during the spontaneous speech. First of all, it is important to know that um, in spontaneous speech, 
in cradle reports are passive. And the structure of the sentence theme is, is too large, it is excessive. A lot of words can be repeated. And, but why is it so? Because, because it is easier for a person who is listening to the speech uh, to understand the, the text in general. And when we and we speak in our speech is so verbose because this is something we do automatically. We can't control it. Furthermore, it is obvious in spontaneous speech there are a lot of words that can express our emotions. And we know that this emotional information is not is also verbose. This lexical is also typical of a spontaneous speech. And if it's spontaneous, if a speech is spontaneous, there are sometimes some distortions and log logical mistakes. This is obvious and understandable. And the students should know how to deal with it when they listen to the text so that they are able to interpret it. And a script is perfect for this. I would like to um, define the three phases of analyzing. This is this. This would be important for all types of interpretation. What goals do we make? In the first phase, the students should be made sure that writing down each word and listening and remembering each word is something that is not necessary. They should understand what they should understand what is important in the text and what is not and they should be able to analyze the script so a script which is read it and try to analyze it what is important for the communication and what is excessive what is not necessary what has no semantic information so the most important is to, to analyze the text. So the third phase, we have learned the how it works, but now they should try to implement this. At first, it, it will be it will be slow slowly. They should realize what they are doing in the process of interpretation. Of course, it takes time, and of course, they should be using the transcript. For instance, as an example of a transcript, we may find scripts from sessions of the Russian State Duma. They cover different topics, both speeches that were prepared in advance, um, where there are some spontaneous speeches as well. And now we should try to differ speeches that were prepared, and they are different from spontaneous speech. 
and it's important to understand this difference. It's better to start with it with the speeches that were prepared. And the second phase is important for analyzing the text. They try to develop skills during this phase. And on this third phase, when they have learned uh, to understand what is important and what is not, the students start to use their shorthand writing. They listen and write down, because doing these two things simultaneously is pretty difficult. It's difficult to write down and to listen. First phrase, we should prove to our students that the elements that are important for the communication um, do not occur very often in the text. Here you can see an example of a text that was prepared in advance. And um, there are certain words that are in bold. These are words that are, that are communicatively important. Uh, we try to analyze this text with my students. I usually say to them, try to guess about the proportions, what is important for the communication and what is less important or even excessive. And then it turns out that the important elements in this speech that was prepared are, are not numerous, by the way, the percentage is pretty small. So we try to find the base, the semantic base, I take such texts, I read them slowly, and the students, this usually happens in a, a special type of classroom, I record them, they try to find the semantic base. These are usually very, very this, it's very simple words. They usually pronounce it after each sentence, and it turns out that they record the, the basic information of the text. They and we listen to these recordings and discuss them. In the beginning, usually, uh, the, the recordings are excessive, but um, we try to write more than is necessary. On the other hand, we try to see whether um, they, try, they included everything. They, they, we do slowly not to have time for everything, but have time to understand. On the second phase, when they learn to analyze the text, we start to write down, make the interpreter short head writing. Slowly, then my students write it down and repeat, and we try to compare. And what do we have as a result? They, the students usually are less nervous. They are not in panic. They have enough time for everything. If they 
write down each word. They spend time to writing down and writing down what is not important. And after that, the student understands what is the most important in semantic terms. They understand what is the most important. And if they interpret and if they translate this most important elements, they will be able to translate the text in general. They may miss certain details, but the details, as we know, they are not the most important thing. On the other hand, uh, the interpreter is responsible. It's in, an interpreter who decides what is a detail and what is the important element of the text. And I believe that is everything I wanted to tell you. I hope that you found my presentation interesting. In the beginning, I, I thought you would speak about transcripts. When I started, we had a course of uh, making transcripts. And um, you spoke about a speech prepared in advance and uh, text from textbooks. I couldn't see any difference, to be honest. And also spoke about a system of remembering a hundred words in that time. Is it your personal project? On the book of Alexeyeva, why is transcript absolutely useless for us? Transcript is important to understand what is the semantic base of the text. It's maybe even harmful for interpreters. Unfortunately, we have
Вот, и мы с вами продолжаем. Передаю I asked the previous speaker to stop presenting. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Hello. And uh, my colleague and I would like to present uh, the topics of uh, projects for translation students, academic traditions versus industry needs. I'm the only one here from Moscow State um, from Gimo, uh, and um, Dmitry Troitsky is uh, the gen director general of uh, translation, and uh, he's been uh, teaching at the uh, University. We've made our presentation by two professors, practicing professors. Um, and uh, the second presenter is uh, a representative of uh, uh, the job market. Thank you, fellow colleagues. Thank you for this chance to speak here before you. Today, Maria Mihalna has birthday. Let's uh, wish Maria Mihalna happy birthday and uh, I uh, wish all the best. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our, we aim at uh, raising the quality of uh, interpreters and uh, translators. We believe that um, graduation project for translation students must uh, be uh, relevant to what um, is really important at the university. We analyzed uh, the job market. We analyzed uh, the topics of uh, graduation projects for translation. We've seen how they comply with each other and how the units in the curriculum uh, comply with the competences which are important for modern translators and interpreters. And we've uh, made some recommendations on how we can make it better. Uh, today we have uh, the following situation. Of course, last year was an anomaly. We needed a lot of medical translation and we had uh, a decline in uh, translation, in uh, interpretation. First of all, we see the fall in the market, um, the number of um, um, the birds is being small. It's not a gradual decline due to political reasons. We don't have problems uh, texts of uh, common them topics. Um, CAT tools uh, and artificial intelligence also help. Uh, we need um, a lot of special translations and we need um, scientific, medical, legal, OG, visual translation. And today, not people who are translators, uh, who are professional translators, but people who have double degrees or who have uh, an additional degree. And for instance, in uh, Tel University, uh, they study at uh, IT and I teach them English. We have um, a demand in translation to foreign languages. It is a big problem since translators make a lot of mistakes when they translate to the, not their language. Uh, there is no um, translation in the market uh, in small cities in Russia. For instance, I live in Tula. We don't have interpretation. 
over the last 10 years, there hasn't been a single demand to translate, um, to interpret it. Interpretation is really local thing. We can see a huge demand to audiovisual translation because it's a growing market. Uh, if translation is not specified, specified, it's English language. For instance, a few years ago, we launched um, a university at uh, uh, Tula because the Chinese have uh, transferred all, translated all their documents in English. All technical matters are easier to discuss in English, and that's the problem for relevant for other uh, industries. They don't use their native language. Um, they use it in English. They write in English. And another serious problem of specialized translation, which has been extremely important today. We have a lot of bad texts and students must be prepared that they should not translate what was written. They have to think, they have to analyze. Uh, today, translator is a co-author of the text. In result, the text must allow to work for the person who asked at first to ask this text. If we look at how you can see they comply we can see technical translation it's 30 percent medical it's 15 percent uh, legal translation 20 percent uh, we can see a huge number of this pie uh, of uh, this, uh, translation uh, which requires a really deep industry knowledge. If we see the rating of top uh, 10 client segments in in uh, money, we can see that uh, oil and gas industry is on the top. Uh, the second is localization of sites. It is translation into English. And uh, third, medicine. Medicine has always been really high on this rating, but now it's even more high. We don't have uh, artistic translation. It is um, really small. Uh, however, artistic translation is very popular at the university. We don't have political translation here. And uh, uh, the market is dominated by uh, localization, oil, gas, and other uh, translation which requires deep industry knowledge. In uh, as in uh, European Union, there is the same situation. We can see um, how the topic is um, divided. We can see absolutely the same uh, the same picture. We can see that legal translation, economical translation, administrative translation, and fiction, 7%. But we believe that it would be logical that universities must pay more attention to technical and legal texts since they are more in demand in university. When we see different universities, we can see topics of uh, graduation projects for translations, uh, for instance, that is um, artistic translation, which is uh, not relevant in the market. Students oriented at uh, uh, artistic translation will be very disappointed. Next comes grammatics and uh, phonetics, and that's uh, really not really relevant to the work of uh, translation, uh, science and uh, IT, legal translation, they are extremely important in the market. Tourism, economics, 
we don't have any compliance between the topics of graduation projects of students between what the market really needs i believe we have uh, absolutely um, illogical strive to translate artistic translation we have a lot of didactics topics we don't have a lot of um, or a lot of uh, projects on uh, very relevant topics. Here we can present uh, an opinion of a student, of a graduate student. They did not mention CAD systems um, that didn't study and they don't know anything about the systems. If we see the distribution of the topics uh, on the curriculum, we can see a very strange uh, picture. We can see IT here, which are now very important to translate and why there is always uh, didactics. Russian language is not very popular, but it is also important. As a representative of uh, the industry, I need to see such uh, the student um, must have a basic knowledge of everything. Uh, he or she must know in IT. They must know Russian language. So we can see that uh, there is no compliance between the curriculum and uh, between what uh, the market needs. First, we need uh, uh, having we need to have specialization uh, and uh, deep knowledge of industry. Um, students must know how to work with the. Uh, Effective text. We should not write comments. No one reads comment, comments. We need to have a great document you can work with. Student must understand what happens in this world, what doesn't happen, and the uh, students must know um, how to work with uh, CAD tools, QA tools. Uh, and many other instructions. And at the same time, students must have uh, emotional inte intelligence and soft skills. They have to have uh, soft skills um, and of working with clients. That's not the problem of students. They are not taught to work with it. That's a real case from the university. That's a real order for. If you study a translation, you must understand what to do with this. If, this, if your students don't understand what's written here, they are not ready to work um, in the real job market. And now I uh, uh, give a word to my colleague. Thank you. I would like to tell you about the parallel study. And at the same time, they've held the, the research and they published an article that is a great article, that's a great uh, journal for uh, teachers and our colleagues published this research. And we can see that we've came to the same conclusion They've also studied the graduation projects for translation students that were presented to the um, competitions of uh, the gradu graduation projects for translation students. 
and uh, over those three years they analyzed topics um, of uh, uh, graduation projects that uh, are considered to be the best for instance they presented that uh, topics are not into real translation uh, uh, students don't really can analyze big data of text in different styles there are linguistics topics which are um, which study different uh, articles of uh, transformations etc that might be interesting for student in terms of uh, study but it doesn't have any practical any practical value neither for student nor for the science we found some topics which were aimed at the didactics which are not which cannot be chosen as uh, graduation projects I urge you to read this article. It's really interesting and it can be extremely useful for professors when they uh, formulate the topics of uh, graduation projects for translation students. And we've uh, came up with recommendations uh, for students and for our curriculum we've consulted with our colleagues it's our common recommendation we believe that universities should um, monitor the real demand in the market and build a process um, in, to make sure that the topics are in compliance with the topics which are in demand in the market the students should not be getting ready for the scientific um, career they must be ready for their practical career i urge you to work with um, the industry and uh, confirm topics with the representatives of industry it would be great if students could um, graduate from university as uh, fully are ready for their future career it could be medical translation audiovisual translation etc a translator must have specialization and last but not least i believe that for big universities students translators should uh, uh, go to should go to different uh, uh, courses uh, outside of their curriculum to make sure that they have uh, some some concrete specialization oh, i have questions i will be fast it was a great presentation i agree with some things i disagree with other things uh, cat systems should be used yesterday there are a section probably the representatives of some universities have already implemented it i think that didactics does not oh. there is no uh, didactics and we don't teach students to i had and uh, translation and that's why i could uh, teach as well and it is well it's really great for students when they have didactics you don't know how his life will turn out probably he will only 
be teaching. I don't understand how, why shouldn't we pay attention to grammar? How will we work with phonetics and grammar? Okay, phonetics is relevant for interpreters, but for written translators, the lack of grammar, it's terrible. Uh, about grammar, I want to answer the 90% of texts are not written by uh, uh, by, in, it's by native speakers. Grammar doesn't help uh, studying translate. Okay, okay, okay. When you come to, when you don't know grammar, comrades, you need to know grammar of Russian language and Russian um, and English language. How will you edit it? We won't be doing up. Uh, you will put it in Google Translate and it will be done. Okay, and I don't agree with the fact that your last message was uh, that you have to um, engage uh, translators uh, from uh, translators practice and uh, for instance my yesterday's uh, presentation was about unit translations about medical translation um, legal translation we need ask people work there i worked in uh, different topics i wanted to say that um, i specialize in uh, geology I've uh, said it yesterday, you probably heard that. For instance, uh, students from uh, another university, they will go to medical lecture, they will go to geology lecture, that's unreal. Uh, the translator, the practicing translation must uh, teach students. He is the only one who will be able to understand what's uh, difficult to understand uh, when you are not a specialist. I teach a unit-based uh, course and I uh, and I tell you different moments which will be difficult. I know that because last year I graduated from geology. And what's the question, Olga? We are waiting for your question. What's your question? You are dominating the discussion. You take up a lot of time after each and every scene. Maybe you could um, keep up to the topic and uh, ask questions. And I also wanted to say to protect the um, interpretation, we have international arbitral What's your question, Olga? I don't have a question, really. I have some remarks after your presentation. Maybe we could uh, discuss this in the end as part of our discussion. Okay, fellow colleagues, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for uh, thorough analysis of uh, the translation market. Uh, the only thing I wanted to uh, ask you, it's really relevant for me, and I wanted to continue to the words of Dmitry Igorovich, a translator becomes uh, the co-author of the text, and a lot of texts we receive, uh, they are truly defected, and the uh, translator must use uh, his or her analytical skills not only in the text of uh, technical matters but uh, in uh, political translation as well and we are um, continuing our discussion and i would like to give the floor to our colleagues from saint petersburg university tarnaya valeria petrovna Good afternoon. Всем видно мой экран. 
подключусь. У меня что-то с видео. Да. Угу. Коллеги, видна презентация? Пока Лариса Петровна подключается. Мне видна. Я да. не знаю, как другим коллегам. Да, все в порядке, все видно. Хорошо, тогда я пока представлюсь. Меня зовут Шаврова Анна Владимировна. Анна Владимировна Шаврова. Я ассистент в Санкт-Петербург She is my colleague, my professor, who is a doctor of pedagogical studies. We prepared a statement on lingual cognitive theories of the linguistic personality of translator in the sphere of professional communication. We like to know that one of the key factors of a linguistic personality is a lingual cognitive thesaurus. And many studies indicate the linguistic personality of the translator starts from the lingual cognitive level, which uh, indicates the, all the personality, imagination, and characteristic of a personality, everything that is linked to subjective linguistic or cognitive thesaurus. In general, thesaurus can be defined as a, a number of lexical units that reflect our knowledge of the environment and and we may be is receivers of additional information, thus uh, the thesaurus changes. When it comes to the thesaurus can be seen as a systematized number of words that are necessary for speaking about a certain subject. In our case, this is about a given sphere. Studies linked to the development of a personality a system of personal qualities that are necessary for a work in a different professional sphere. The context of the Zoros depends on information, knowledge, and experience performed during studies, and they can be used in the future in, in future professional work. And they study lingual cognitive thesaurus can be understood as a system of cultural and professional knowledge of both linguistic and extra-linguistic sphere that are necessary for translating senses. Далее мы с вами рассмотрим структуру профессионального discourse. They can be expressed both in words, in word phrases, of morphology and syntaxes. The second component, which, which is not verbalized, includes the knowledge of extralinguistic character, the knowledge about the subject, about the uh, behavior and stereotypes, stereotypes, cultural traditions, for instance, in, very, in clothes, um, time, space, uh, body language, symbols, expressing emotions, various different gender differences in the West and in the East, and state symbols. 
and it's important to note each of these components includes компонентам, которым относятся дискурсивный компонент, discourse component, strategic component, rhetorical component, lingual cultural component, subjective component and technical component. Let us say a few words about each of them. Uh, speaking about the discourse component, it includes the knowledge that is necessary for understanding, interpreting, and translation into the language of translation of the text of the business discourse. This knowledge may be the following. Logical links причинно-следственные и прочие связи. Также сюда включены знания о смысловых средствах. The strategic components include the knowledge of various language units that are necessary for these aspects includes the knowledge of terms, professional verbs, uh, germanisms, grammar structures that are numerous uh, component includes the knowledge about the qualities of rhetoric organization of business discourse представлены знания о частотных э, коммуникативных стратегиях, речевых тактиках и речевых актов. Speech tactics, and speech acts, uh, it's about stylistic characteristics of the business discourse, like parallel construction metaphors, and so on. The next component, lingua cultural component, it includes the knowledge that are necessary to expressing and translating the cultural traditions of one language. Knowing it's about knowing cultural terms and the cultural units. Cultural um, characteristics of word formation, lexical and syntactical correlation, national and cultural characteristic of using stylistic terms. Коммуникативных стратегий, речевых тактик и речевых актах, контактирующих в ходе перевода национальных дискурсов. Следующий компонент технический. Such knowledge include translational transformation, translation, transliteration, generalization, the semantic development, and so on. And the last component. Переводчика. Это предметный компонент, который 
traditions, cultural customs uh, of both languages. For instance, welcoming aid symbols, gender relations in various cultures, and so on. переводчиков в сфере профессионального общения мы выделяем вербализованный и не define that there are verbalized and non-verbalized concepts and their semantics is inserted into this space of professional discourse and thus we see the system of semantic interactions in the year you can see on the web slide an, an example of those macro concepts that are included using the cognitive uh, cluster of business communication business and environment business and society finance banking um, business and technology и так далее. Далее мы рассмотрим структуру. And each macro concept includes a micro concept that has its own cognitive sectors. And now we'll speak about micro concepts of the second, third levels. It is important to note that and thus they can include a number of cognitive clusters. You can see on the website an example. Business concept includes the following concepts. Therefore, Совокупность данных вербализованных и невербализованных for translating the information of professional discourse in accordance with the expectations of the parties. So that's about when speaking about the adequate translation, it is important to form the necessary skills, the skill to the skill of composition, semantic organization of discourse, coherence, introduction, development, and conclusion of any micro or micro topic, the skill of structural and semantic framing of a discourse, and the skill of rhetoric, organization of a business discourse. It's about developing necessary skills to express the communicative intention of the author. These skills are the necessary skills for the future work of the translator. Now you can see the literature that we used for preparing this statement. And thank you so much. Thank you so much 
for your statement. There are no questions yet. We leave it for discussion. I thank you for you for a very informative statement, and I would like to know that that a translator has to know a lot, has great a great deal of competences. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Our statement and our research was about a subject and a person speaking before us is also about teaching. And I would like to remember about it when and our today's statement is also touches upon teaching because and how, how can we form these cognitive theories that is a necessary part of, of, of the work of a translator. So I'm sorry for... Thank you so much for your remark. And we would like to welcome our colleagues from St. Petersburg, uh, Russian State University of Herzen, Olga Gustova, and Ludmila Yelizarova. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm happy to welcome you here. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. In our statement, we would like to speak more about certain aspects of teaching written translation. In certain aspects, we would like to speak about competences and automation of translation process. We would like to speak about uh, analyzing the text in the modern realities and speak about the formation and development of analytical competences uh, of our students. Modern informational technologies for the last 10 years, as far as we know, had a huge impact on various aspects of our work. The necessary the recent report and survey and allows us to speak about the quality changes that occurred in, in our profession. Earlier we spoke about Heinz and its lexicographical aspect of our work. Now we speak more about using modern systems and automation instruments for the technologies are extremely important and we can see it. In many aspects, uh, the translation is also about using tab tools and machine translation. It's about automating our translation. We try to renew our terminological base. And of course, all this work in the larger part are 
carry out in its project. And these new requirements appeared recently, and this proved that we need to develop professional competences uh, using new translation tools. But at the same time, we see another paradox. As technologies develop, our students have a more simple uh, understanding of what translation is. They upload their document and see a result. The document is translated. And to make a translation, they think it is enough to know this, how to use these technologies. We believe that the overestimate technologies, forgetting about analytical aspect of translation. And now there is a question whether this analysis is important. We don't have any doubts, but among the translation industry, we see skeptical attitude towards translation analysis. We can uh, make this conclusion from work with employers. They say that translation analysis is um, um, is not relevant to translation practice and uh, the real time is not uh, relevant. That is why we believe that the necessity to prepare people regarding the training of translators, but if we look at the way translation works in the modern company, we can conclude that translation is a very relevant, uh, demanded part of work. It's not on always a separate part of job, but it is used in practice quite often. We believe it is a very important part of project management. On the other hand, translation analysis um, takes up different character in terms of uh, translation analysis, and it uh, demands different approach to the development of this competence. Uh, if before students had to translate a small text, one or two pages to to make an analysis of text based on uh, numerous criteria. Um, student made an anal analysis, then uh, he or she proceeded to written translation. Today, taking into account that uh, in um, translation companies, uh, the text uh, for translation should be uh, bigger than the text uh, proposed in the during the course of studies and um, as we often say these texts um, um, demand a collective teamwork and uh, cut tools thus the process of uh, development of the competence should uh, be um, handled different we find different parts of this uh, competence. We see that we know when we just, for instance, the ones presented on this text, unfortunately, this component almost never used at the universities. And now we have to conclude that we need to reconsider the translation analysis, the determination, and uh, find some main points. And uh, taking into account the fact that, on the one hand, translation analysis uh, has been studied uh, quite well, we wanted to 
uh, point out two important matters. Uh, we believe that one of the biggest um, mistakes of the analysis is uh, the lack of um, uh, of the translational strategy should be um, should be made with the consideration of uh, uh, technical software. Uh, what's which kind of software? We, what software we need to translate this text? If we disregard this fact, the um, gap between real life translation and uh, uh, translation during course of studies will be uh, still wide. Uh, the next thing is um, our aims were defined. However, we faced a number of problems and we can uh, say that translation stops being a formal part of translation and is included in active intellectual work of the translator at all the steps of the project. Let's see at which uh, stages of translation we need analytical work with the text uh, in conditions of real work. When we get this text, um, we get an order for this text. We make a decision whether we should use machine translation or we should not. Should we apply uh, um, post editing? How translation agencies make this choice? Project management studies the text, studies the uh, aims of the text, for instance, it might be a marketing text uh, aimed at attracting consumers and customers, or the text uh, is uh, dedicated to technical specialists. And all these moments for project management are record points which are important for uh, the text. Whether a machine a translation will suffice or a professional a translator should uh, handle this text. Or we need uh, to apply machine translation with, um, uh, with an editing. We uh, say that uh, we need to find communicative aim of the text. So before we send this text, we need to make the analysis of text, even if we don't call it like this. And this analysis is uh, connected with the quality of uh, the uh, translator makes uh, ideas, um, especially when uh, um, there is a strict deadline. And that is a usual thing when uh, we have a strict deadline. So what uh, number of words will be used by uh, machine translation? Uh, or maybe we should simplify the text for machine translation. To answer these questions, we need analytical work with the text. Um, the same time we analyze text when we uh, edit um, the text in terms of uh, correctness, uh, style of the text, quality of the text. We can make a conclusion that analytical work is, an, um, is a, a part of work, the text. It is an integral part of uh, translation. And uh, taking this into account, we believe that it would be logical to find more broader understanding of this uh, job. We need not only translator, but all the specialists who take part in this process and, uh, um, and um, 
make decisions about the translation. Some researchers believe that uh, today um, we need to orient at the machines, but we should never, but we should not omit uh, the style analysis. We need to understand uh, the shift in translation activities, and we need to understand typological and other characteristics of the text. We need to understand the kinds and the architecture of uh, programs and systems, their possibilities, their program possibilities. And in the end, I would like to note that a written translation uh, training must focus on the deep understanding of the text, uh, defining the strategy for translation and uh, evaluation of the results of the translation. And that the uh, reflection and uh, seeing the link between the start and the end of translation is extremely relevant today. Thank you, colleagues. We uh, tried to um, we tried to fit in ten minutes, but we had to omit some things just to keep strict uh, limit. Thank you, fellow colleagues. Thank you for keeping a strict uh, line. You know, it's our part. I have a comment, not a comment, but maybe I've uh, admitted something. If no one speaking, others don't have time to speak. Okay, tell me, you told about message so well, I want to listen to you. I am sure others have questions. Yes, um, I have uh, a request. I would really like to receive this presentation. Could you please share it? Of course, I can leave my email in uh, the chat box and you can write me and we will send you the presentation right away. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's probably not a very good turn for our discussion. I believe that this uh, presentation was extremely relevant. Um, it was something. Um, it's, I don't have any questions. Thank you, colleagues. I want to say that this problem has been relevant for us for many, many years. And uh, along with our program about about practicum, we want to open a new program at the master's level that is called uh, CAD Tools. Of, uh, and since it's a very long process of uh, development of this program, we try to find which CAD tools we should use. Uh, we want to work with translation agencies, with companies, they have materials, they have programs, but they don't have uh, any methods which we can uh, provide as uh, professors. So thank you very much for uh, positive feedback and for this great grade you gave us. We really want to um, affiliate the market with the job. And taking consideration this, I want to ask you another question. This will be, what kind of master degree this is going to be? It's, there is academical, there is applied master program, because I believe that this education uh, in, uh, means a lot of practice. And we have a lot of practice. We are we are used to, and now we have new linguistics, um, which uh, proposes other hours of auditorium. We don't have enough practice, and we've built a new plan that is a real master degree. We, want, we studied from September to December not like today from September to the beginning of November. 
and uh, the ability to formulate our professional competence in the professional format, what aims we want to achieve. We see great potential in this and uh, uh, this tendency allows us to um, establish translation um, training. We don't have applied mas uh, master's degrees. I want to support colleagues, they said about the ease of translation. Today, students uh, say that um, they use a lot of gadgets, it's easier to translate now. And when you're working with a client, uh, with your client, uh, I don't mean uh, the agents of translation uh, the quality the time limit and uh, the deadline are important i've listened to a lecture of dmitry ivanovich why do we need to study those transformations uh, some other elements when you have a a translator must why we why the translator made this or that choice and when i've listened to your speech i understood that that was the message i wanted to say we study all this in order to be able to justify your choice and to and to help you to stand your ground when you work with colleagues. We didn't speak about the easiness of translation with the use of automatization. It's not, um, there are a lot of difficulties in translation. When our students study a uh, master different uh, tools that's not easy for them it's difficult it's a complex job but it has its own specialties and today Dmitry Igorevich paid attention to the fact that universities often uh, study one thing but uh, practically students need another things we try to to bridge the gap between these areas thank you very much fellow colleagues for your very relevant speech for your very relevant presentation and i think that some questions we will be able to discuss and i'll give the floor to the representatives of uh, Russian Academy of Alexandrova, Yelena, please. Thank you, fellow colleagues. Now I'll try to share my screen. Hello, colleagues. Um, today, let me thank you uh, for opportunity to take part in an interesting discussion and a chance to share my ideas and uh, insights. For instance, now I would like to uh, talk to you about uh, linguistic creativity development and uh, 3L course uh, when we are, there is a new period in translation. artificial intelligence the quality of is um, mentioned by the professor and new social role of the translator new competences and uh, in times of development of digital technologies and optimization of processes we formulate um, 
competences which are becoming increasingly relevant. We have only three soft leaves skills of uh, the specialists of the future and three one of the most important together with EQ are uh, pre-adaptiveness, uh, this ability to, um, to adapt to fast change, creativity that allows to use uh, creative approach and create innovative approach. We give two uh, definitions to this term. Um, it's either ability to um, solve difficult questions, difficult uh, tasks. We see it as one complex. When it comes to linguistic creativity, it is a term, it's not an only term that used in this sphere. Language creativity, verbal creativity, lingua creativity, mindset, and etc. We like the term lingua, linguistic creativity because it's, well, one of the most famous terms. We define linguistic creativity as uh, um, as ability of a person to find words to generate creative product that is an innovation as um, 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 I based on two words invention and innovation invention is something you can use only once and innovation it is something that is used regularly that is um, new linguistic um, and we use two maths idea. We can uh, work on this uh, definition, but now we are leaving it as that. Why the course is called 3L creativity. Language, in English language, it's language localization and translation and literature and um, we found the terms uh, in Russian all these three stages turned out to be very um, convenient for the translation activity. We have three different stages to find, to understand, to translate, and then to continue. I will explain creativity as a language game, a part of humor, are interconnected in many uh, studies the connection between the humor and the creative um, approach uh, is um, confirmed uh, humor is um, creativity what's what's common between uh, a joke and insightful task in some cases, text can be considered as a joke. Text should be should actualize to um, ideas that go around. It should be used for all these characteristics to some extent uh, can be applied when on solving insightful task, we understand that it is uh, connected to the uh, creative competencies. And we asked our students, we asked whether they consider themselves a creative person, whether they 
thought um, so the necessity to develop creative potential whether they received any information whether they liked um, make this deal whether they uh, consider this problem whether the verbal humor uh, leads to the development of uh, um, creative mindset uh, as the result of the survey, we managed to find that this course will be very popular among our students and it will be relevant for the students of philological specialities. For all the linguists, it would be really, um, especially for people who uh, do, uh, um, who are working in marketing. And then we transformed it a bit and uh, it turned out uh, the topic of creativity of uh, puns. Uh, and uh, the problem of uh, quasi translation, which can be translated from um, algorithms and uh, ideas that could be used in other tech and in what text we face this problem. We already have all the material for this course and um, this course the first modules we want to make more le lectures um, but then they're going to be practice there will be uh, exercises, understanding, translation, and uh, uh, making up words. For instance, here are some examples of exercises we, we propose for text, but we propose that maybe it would be really cool. We asked to... Uh, guess the text our students are really really far away from this topic they couldn't understand what uh, what topic and only after the explanation uh, they could feel the puns i understand that it is used all over the world and it's really relevant for us We propose an introduction and then you have to exchange your ideas. That's to guess what we see. Here are pictures. But then we try to understand the meaning and the joke in English because it's not that easy and it's not that easy to do from the first time. And the second time, uh, there is a chance to translate to do a translation in the traditional sense of word and uh, a reverse translation. For instance, we take uh, a joke that was translated in Google or Yandex translation, we ask them to uh, to take this for here is a plan about uh, lady killer, but not one word. And of course, that's just an idea. I believe that. A third uh, point, try to find a calendar. There is a word person and uh, about sent. There is a great deal of exercises. There are various types of such uh, exercises. 
в обычной таблице, и, в некоторой методике, и переведите эту ошибку в аудиовизуальную там, или аудиовизуальную, представьте. То есть там много вариантов упражнений. There's a great deal of exercises, types of exercises using images and texts. Потому что на самом деле это 125 слайдов. Вот, то есть, и плюс мы даем им в практическом варианте еще техники формирования идей. Ideation techniques. Если вы хотите, у нас сейчас будет. If you wish, I will. I will. I have an article on this issue. Uh, maybe in the second issue we'll find an article. There is. There are thousands of techniques that we may use for different branches and spheres. They were adapted for interpreters. We have chosen eight. Что на всякий случай еще сделали? Когда мы предлагали студентам, предложили студентам выполнить тест. Для этого мы адаптировали тест. To find the number of relevant ideas and the number of original ideas, nine assignments. They were given to two groups. And they had to do this assignment using their experience. They were supposed to translate it and according to an experiment you see it in the tab table Результаты 30 участников первой группы, которым не был предоставлен этот модуль, сравнили с результатами 30 участников второй группы. Группы были разные, по три группы отдельных было в каждой группе эксперимента. Для оценки эффективности, я уже повторюсь, извините, адаптировали тест Торренса, в котором креативность изменяется тремя измерениями, да, беглостью, гибкостью и оригинальностью. И затем сопоставили эти результаты. Ну, сразу скажу, что... Try to compare those results. The first group spent uh, 50 minutes to do the assignment. And then said I did everything I could and concluded their work. The second group, uh, it took almost 90 minutes to do the assignment. There was no limit. There was no time limit. And they, uh, they had certain issues. They didn't have Uh, they could not generate enough ideas. Sometimes it takes time to, uh, to solve a problem. And their Общее количество релевантных идей увеличилось на 75%. Но ну, мы смотрели, подходит вообще, есть там вообще хотя бы языковая игра, и как, ну, хотя бы из этой же области это было или нет. И, в общем-то, оригиналь, количество оригинальных идей также... Estimate that this course was not uh, took a lot of time. It would be necessary for both students and the uh, translators. For those who solve the different problems, to understand what is creativity, to develop certain competences. Thank you so much.
вас заинтересуют какие-то моменты, или вы захотите, чтобы я поделилась информацией или прислала вам какие-то свои разработки. Благодарю вас за внимание и постараюсь ответить на вопросы. Вы знаете, когда-то я читала у Ирины Сергеевны Алексеевой определение такое, способ, вернее, уровня подготовки языковой студента, когда он готов к обучению переводу. Это когда он сам, как бы без, ну, непроизвольно, что называется, начинает применять языковую игру в своей речи. Use it in their uh, speech spontaneously. Maybe they, if they do not ha handle it, they do not have um, enough competent language competences. I agree with you. This assignment is unique. We believe in certain companies translating given content, and a majority of others uh, get stuck. They I agree. Some students were especially good doing this assignment. They could generate those ideas. Maybe it is a kind of a unique talent. But I believe this course is also useful for those who don't have this talent. It helps to develop this talent to обязательный будет. Вот вы сказали, по-моему, что вы... Нет, это по выбору электива. А, по выбору. То есть у студентов есть выбор, например... Конечно. Да, Тут не каждый согласится на такое. Да, да, я же тоже подумала, он такой вот услышан, потому что достаточно. Mm -hmm. Спасибо большое. Елена Михайловна, ой, да, Елена Михайловна, я думаю, что это еще можно просто как часть основного курса перевода использовать. Вот, вот, замечательно, да, да. хорошая такая. Потому что, вот, например, у нас возникает, я все про свое, про общественно-политический перевод, потому что очень много, например, заголовков. Поэтому это тоже представляет особую переводческую трудность, над которой нужно, наверное, работать, но попытаться проявить. Вы говорили о статье своей. The article has recently been published. If you write me an email, I will send it to you. Thank <laughs> Пенсильвании. Вот. И два этих курса, для... ну, я сделала для себя просто массу открытий и поняла, что мир... Draw conclusions, and I will be happy to share them. Если комиксы, у меня вот чисто ориентированная языковая игра. У меня монографии есть по этой теме и пособия. Ну, я этим занимаюсь уже вплотную 15 лет, поэтому. Что-то мне напомнило. Спасибо вот. вам за идею, потому что комиксы я не включила в упражнение. Вот это вот прямо... Включать. Случай, потому что у меня есть все, там и мультфильмы, и фильмы, и все на свете, и реклама, и такая сякая. Ну вот комиксы почему-то ушли. Спасибо вам большое за идею. Сегодня несколько идей записала, потрясающая у нас сессия. Спасибо. Да, действительно, тема очень интересная как-то. Ну, вот наш...
доклад, это следующий, а, в общем-то, наверное, не такой <laughs> веселый, скажем так, да, не такой. Но, тем не менее, вот мы хотим а, вам представить твой проект. Нам наша тема звучит следующим образом. Способы достижения равноценности регулятивного воздействия русскоязычного цикла. Итак, наше сегодняшнее выступление – это совестный semantic impact, the object of study, realities, and concept of political discourse in information texts for the speakers of target language. Uh, it's an, an average Russian recipient. Our goal is to develop to find a political solution and to produce the necessary communicative effect of the original and translated language. As any professional work, translation has its own public importance to make the communication adequate. Адекватный перевод призван обеспечить равнозначную the mind, emotions, behavior of our of the recipient. It is important to note that the people are not separated by the language, but also by the cultural and ethnic barrier. That is why it is important to take into account emotional, cultural, ethnic characteristics. It's important to take into account the pragmatic aspect of translation. We tried to base our study on the study of a German uh, linguist, Albrecht Neubert. He believed that the original language and the target language, taken into account is one of the most important aspects of translation. It's important to enlarge the public. It's taken into account the relations between the speakers of a target and source language. The pragmatic adequacy of translation It depends on the classifications of source languages. He defines four types 
the text. You can see them text for speakers of the translation language, text for, for the speakers of the original language that are part of multicultural heritage and texts that are based on our common needs. These are texts of scientific and technological literature. Katarina Rice, a German linguist, speaks about the method of translation depends on the type of the text and the function of language. In her work, she tries to develop her own uh, classification of texts texts that are oriented on the contest, media texts, uh, instructions, official documents, educational and specialized literature, texts that are oriented on the form. These are aesthetic Third, are oriented on appellation. It's about advertising, education, sermons, audio and visualized texts, like texts that are spread via radio, television, and so on. It's important to know, to know that this Scopus theory, the Scopus is going to be translated from Greek as a goal. Catherine Rice formulated the following definition of translation. Translation is a kind of activity that can be characterized by two different cultures. It, it's different from the traditional equivalence theory, which focuses on the equivalence. The translator has a goal, which is a recipient, and he should take into account the needs and goals of this recipient. Thank you so much. And thus, the this is important to take into account the goal of the translation. The recipient is a person or a, a group of people that have their own knowledge in a given sphere of communication. With the help of certain transformation. Irina, dar, нет, вот мне кажется, вот этот слайд как раз сейчас должен быть. Нет, нет, и вы потом как раз продолжите еще. Да. Да, это у нас. То есть цель переводчика как раз, да? Да. И таким образом цель переводчика вызвать в языковом сознании рецепиента. The goal of the translator to invoke the usual images and concept that the Russian scientists speak about. It is important to account realities and concepts of political discourse 
that we found in the text of this classification, communicative text, according to Neubert. Next, for the speakers of the text of the language, they depend on the function of the language according to Rice and the text of this having a description function text that gives provides certain information. And as I've mentioned, um, as a recipient, we took an average Russian reader. And now we'd like to name the following criteria. Pragmatic adaptation of the original text into the cultural characteristic of the text. The second, it depends. The information must be precise and concise. Commentaries or remarks, which are often difficult to understand. And third, it is an approach to slavarism. It's important to корпус исследуемой лексики охватывает прежде всего следующие сферы. Это название учреждений, церемониально-процедурная терминология, партийно-политическая ориентация, обозначение должностей, званий, рангов, темпоральные конструкции, обстоятельства времени, численные и количественные характеристики. А в качестве основной переводческой трансформации, позволяющей достичь равноценных коммуникативных эффектов, и регулятивного воздействия используется адекватная замена. Пожалуйста, следующий слайд. Mm -hmm. Так, ну вот как раз данная таблица и иллюстрирует конкретные примеры применения метода прагматически адаптированного перевода. Я не знаю, присутствуют ли здесь коллеги, которые владеют немецким языком. Я хочу вот пару примеров буквально а, пояснить. Да, например, die Landtagswahl, это значит выборы в Лантаг. Лантаг – это земельный парламент а, в федеральных а, землях а, ФРГ. И предлагаем, соответственно, адаптированный перевод региональный выбор. The Minister of Foreign Affairs um, of the United States, State Department of the United States of America. And the recent example, a very relevant one, is a speech of our president, uh, the speech of our president that is called uh, the annual address to the federal council. And if we translate it to German, which means speech, a um, statement about the state of the nation. So the term in German um, um, sounds like the state of the union. Uh, and we have uh, this response. Yes, we've presented our coincise conclusion that adaptive translation has practical importance for the possibilities of its implementation in the current realities and uh, lexical uh, novelties and linguistics. That's innovation. Communicative direction presented in the text of German linguist Neubert and Weiss, as well as uh, approach to equivalent through the theory of Scopus, uh, allowed us to show the literature we used. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm so sorry that I've stumbled a bit. Do you have any questions, comments? Так, ну, не вижу. Okay. I can't see any volunteers. 
еще осталось 17 минут. We have 17 minutes left, and I believe we could discuss some questions um, to argue with each other. Maybe you have any propositions or any information you want us, would like us to hear. Maybe information about your new projects, your new student books, uh, articles or comments to the I've got a question uh, for myself about the presentations we've seen before. The first presentation I uh, about Tatiana, I'm sorry. Татьяна Николаевна, вот насколько я поняла, вы пользовались стенографией. Вы пользовались стенографией. Вы должны what does it mean to use uh, uh, transcript? Script, it's in the word, it's a script stenogram. Ну, ну, вообще это называется стенограмма. Даже на сайте Думы это так называется. Да? Да. Стенограмма. Ну, расшифрованная. Это еще стенограмма. результат. Как бы. да, потому что даже когда речь студенты делают... I wanted. Последний вот этот кадр. Спасибо за внимание. Он висит так мало, что я, например, не успеваю переписать контакты. Вот последний кто. Или, может быть, если будет презентация или контакты, это первое. И второе я еще хотела сказать. Вот меня натолкнула на мысль Елена Александрова, которая выступала в плане креативности. Вот то, с чем еще сталкивается переводчик в реальной be copywriters, could be rewriters. It is more specialization of uh, the translator of marketing texts, but these elements are extremely relevant in the market. Marketing is really essential. I do that and I know that students need it. And when a uh, student comes to translator guru, they can um, assume this role as a cooperator, rewriter. Could I please ask you? I have a question to Dmitry Troitsky and Maria Stepanova. We've heard a phrase that um, since, uh, since uh, topical translation is highly relevant in the market, specialization should be begun in the beginning of the second or third year. But here we have a contradiction because when now uh, we have a contradiction in translation, uh, on the whole, we start um, teach translation from the third year and uh, the question arises, how can they specialize in an industry if they have uh, no skills, uh, no competences whatsoever 
in any kind of translation. We, maybe we should start a translation in a specific sphere. Unfortunately, Dmitry Igorevich had to go to get his uh, COVID-19 vaccine shot. That's why I will be the one answering from our point of view. I believe, uh, as well as I know, the curriculum translation begins at the second year of education in many universities. And in the first year of university, there is a kind of um, translation. And I agree with you with the second part of your question. We can uh, do this uh, simultaneously. We can give uh, some common knowledge about translation uh, in cats, in, um, in cat tools, and some specific knowledge in translation. Uh, many universities have uh, courses where they use cat tools on the whole. We can teach written translation in cat tools. Uh, for instance, I know that in St. Petersburg, uh, it is quite a popular practice. There are such courses and uh, that's extremely relevant to students. And at the same time, we uh, teach students to translate in a modern, in a contemporary system. We could introduce um, specialization some students can choose medical translation, technical translation, audiovisual translation, and many universities have already taken up this, um, stepped up and filled the void. Not everyone wants to be simultaneous um, translator, and in many universities, simultaneous translation, it is, it is a, a choice. Uh, many tr translators could um, specialize in something that what they like and uh, they can try something new and understand that, for instance, technical translation is not for them. They will take up marketing translation, etc. And if this will be a choice, um, it will, uh, there will not be enough hours. A professor if it is going to be an elective it will be uh, what should he do he should uh, create a uh, lay foundation for his translation or find time to specialization it means that uh, not a single aim will be reached in the result of this course. I think it is uh, the problem of the professor who is uh, working on this course. I think we should have a basic translation course where we lay the foundation of translation competences and skills, for instance, transformation and other skills and the separately a specialization course which will have an accent to specific uh, words specific tools for instance if we're speaking about audiovisual translation uh, we need uh, use uh, to use absolutely different tools and um, software I think it should not replace our basic course, but uh, be a valuable addition that will lay a foundation for their further career development. But if our, if uh, they don't have, um, they will face uh, problems uh, which are connected with the lack of faith. And now I have another question. Uh, We know that no professor 
except for a practicing interpreter would be able for a short time give the necessary knowledge for to prepare him for the work. For instance, I worked in, in the sphere of aviation as an interpreter and translator. There such aspects of aviation that are absolutely different. The same implies to oil industry. Professor, for instance, it's about oil extraction, oil production, equipment. These are all different spheres, and we cannot prepare the students for everything. We cannot organize such courses during bachelor or master programs. I believe it would be more efficient if we teach our students to learn the, the terms quickly, to learn them themselves. We do not know in what sphere they will work. We not, their life does not depend lives do not depend on us we do not know where they will work but the ability and the skill to learn the terms quickly the necessary terms this is the key skill for the translator and we will never be able to make them learn all the terms because we don't know those terms ourselves Professor, that is not an interpreter, um, has no right to in teach interpretation. Uh, the second aspect, but it's not our goal to teach our students everything. Our goal is to learn how to search for information. For instance, if I'm not to say to medi medicine, I will not teach it. If I fail this goal, I will try to develop a course in the sphere where I work as a translator or interpreter. The same applies to others. Uh, and, uh, we cannot foresee what problems we'll have, but we can launch a course, a course of marketing, economics. It's, it can be a technical translation, studying some technical terms. According to know how to make uh, glossaries and vocabularies, so we should take into account the realities, the requirements. If we speak about regional universities, each region has its own specifics, maybe ag agriculture, oil and gas. It can also be taken into account so that our students start their work. So, in fact, if I see your point right, those subjects are not the goal, they are just an instrument. If I understand you right, to understand our students how they can work in special terms. Yes, in this case, I agree with you. Then, in this case, it is real. Given the number of hours we have, we cannot, we cannot teach 
I'm sorry, I believe it's time to, to end our discussion on the website of the conference. The, this is really interesting and important, and I would be very happy to discuss it. If you wish, we can continue our discussion in month in Odinsova in, in, Gimel, in late May. Uh, we have a conference on teaching, translation, and interpretation. You have time to apply. And if you wish, if you are interested, I will send you the information later, and I will be happy to see you with your uh, reports and statements. You may either uh, come to Odinsova or speak uh, online. And I will be happy to see you. Спасибо большое, Мария Михайловна. Спасибо большое, коллеги. Я считаю, являются определенным вкладом в развитие перевода ведения и дидактики перевода. Всех благодарю еще раз за правильный интерес к нашей конференции. И хочу вам напомнить о пленарном заседании, которое начнется в 15 часов. Благодарю всех за внимание. Да, ссылки были разосланы вам, и можно заходить через сайт конференции. Вот, кто хочет смотреть на английском языке, может выбрать английскую версию сайта конференции. Спасибо. Спасибо большое, коллеги. Спасибо. 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 Спасиб